Today we're talking all about painting furniture white. We're talking about different shades of white in the three brands that I carry. Fairy Chalk Mother, DIY, and Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. All of them have amazing paint, amazing quality paint, and different shades to help you get the look that you're going for. So stay tuned while we chippy and dark wax and learn how to make amazingness. So today I'm filming myself, so hopefully this video goes well. Zeb is doing a huge table build. If you follow us on social media, you've seen the giant legs that I put in my Insta stories, so he can't be bothered with filming. So today it's you and me. We're talking all about painting white furniture. And it's fall break, so you might hear screaming and yelling, but that's just the way that it's gonna be. So we're gonna talk about white furniture. I know I've been painting a lot of this like boho chicness, but some of you guys have been following me for a long time. And I used to paint a lot of white furniture. So I'm gonna to talk to you about some tips and tricks as well as talk about all the shades of white that I sell on my website. So the thing about white is it shows everything. So it's really important that you clean it. If these were like kitchen chairs, I would be using like Dawn, a degreaser, whatever. But these are just end tables. I really like foaming cleaner because I feel like whatever it is, scrubbing bubbles, foaming glass cleaner that it really gets off the junk and dirt. So I'm just gonna spray the piece, wipe it down, and then take a damp rag, and then wipe it down again to get all the cleaner off. Then I'll be ready for paint. You might hear me in the background because Zeb is actually not building right now. He's actually currently editing, but he's gonna be building soon. So I've got this scraper, and I'm in no way endorsed by this, but this is the Pampered Chef scraper. If you get like schmegma that you just can't get off, you can use a razor blade too, but this does really good at like getting stuff off without damaging the surface. I like it a lot. Somebody did a really yucky job on these trying to restain the top. It looks like they just slapped stain and some uh, cheap sealer over the top and it's really just like, I could seriously take and get the finish off with my fingernail. And that's not a good way to start out. So that looks like they just did the top, thank goodness. So I'm gonna use my orbital sander in like 100 just to cut through that and then I will paint them because I want a really great surface to paint on. I don't normally sand and you don't normally have to with the stuff that I use, but if it's got a yucky finish that you can scrape off with your fingernail, you best get to sanding or using a high bond primer helps. But I'm out of stock because people keep buying it. So I'm gonna sand it. So today I wanna to talk to you about all the paints that I sell, not just DIY paint or Fairy Chalk Mother or Sweet Pickens. The common denominator is I'm gonna talk about whites and I'm hoping that Zeb can just put the picture next to me when I'm talking about the paint that I'm talking about and then you'll know like what it would look like on my website. But today I'm using DIY White Swan because it's open and I need to use it up. DIY is a clay-based paint, it's also got some chalk um, those kids are loud. It's also got some chalk part of it and it's absolutely no VOC. It's a great to brush the whites cover in like two coats and I love it. DIY paint, you're gonna, the whites are gonna be white swan, beadboard, um, hold on, what's the other one? Oh, vintage linen and crinoline. So white swan is the whitest white and it's still, not quite as white as Fairy Chalk Mother Snowflake, so if you want a true white, 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 then definitely that's your go-to. But it's a nice, pretty bright white. Beadboard and vintage linen pull kind of blue and gray. Vintage linen pulls more gray, I think. Um, that's in my personal opinion. And then crinoline is a cream color. White Swan is kind of a cross between a bright white and, a, and an antique white. It's not, not clearly one or the other, which is nice if you just want something that's a good, happy medium. It brushes on gray, as you can tell. This is one coat and it's covering pretty good. We're gonna move on. We talked about the DIY whites. Let's talk about Fairy Chalk Mother. Fairy Chalk Mother has quite a few whites. Lots of good selection. So we've got, oops, I didn't mean to paint the top yet, so we're gonna have to, there we go. Okay, so there's Snowflake, that's the whitest white. Then you've got Parchment, which is like a really great antique white. And then after parchment comes ivory, which has kind of a pink hue, 
Parchment is nice because there's really no yellow tones in it. It's more of a blue toned off-white. And then ivory, I know pink sounds weird, but if you have it next to the others, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's a great ivory. And then there's fresh cream. And that is going to be a kind of a yellow based cream. So if you want a yellow cream, that's it. Some people don't like yellow in their cream. And that's when I say go to Sweet Pickens because Sweet Pickens has a great cream without yellow. And we'll talk about their paint in a second. Let me finish this little right here. Get this front side done. So last but not least, we've got Sweet Pickens milk paint. Flower sack, we're actually gonna be using that in a minute because I love doing uh, chalk or clay based paint first and then milk paint over the top. Because milk paint is kind of thinner in nature. So if you do one coat of a chalk or a clay based paint or even a good primer and then you put the milk paint over it, it saves you a few coats of paint. So flower sack is the widest white. It's pretty darn white, not quite as white as snowflake, but a close second. And it's one of my favorite farmhouse whites. And then they've got creamy, which Sweet Pickens Creamy is seriously the only cream I've ever found that is not yellow. Like it's off-white, it's like a brown-based creamy and it's super perfect. So when I want a cream that doesn't have a yellow base, I definitely go to Sweet Pickens Creamy. And then there's window paint, and window paint is one of those whites that pulls blue. And the nice thing, if you're using paint and you're wanting to put it in a room that doesn't have a lot of natural light, then you want paint that pulls blue. So that's why Beadboard Vintage Linen by DIY Paint and why window pane from Sweet Pickens is a great option. When you need something that's gonna look brighter in dim light, always choose a white that pulls blue and those three colors will do it for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish my first coat on this nightstand and on the other, and then I'll get started on using my Sweet Pickens milk paint. So in this jar, it says Fairy Chalk Mother, but it's not actually Fairy Chalk Mother, it's milk paint. I always use like random leftover jars to mix my milk paint in so that I can shake it. And basically it's like making hot chocolate. So you measure one part milk paint to one part warm water, you put it in your jar, and then you shake it, shake it, shake it. If you can't get the chunks out, you can stick those little blender bottles. Have you seen them? They come in blender things. You put it in here, the little ball, it comes in the, you know, if you make protein shakes, the put that in there. Balls. What? The whisk balls. Oh, Zeb says the whisk balls. Anyways, and yes, he said he was building a table, but he's still inside. Anyways, you put it in here, and then you shake, 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 until it's nice and mixed up. I'm using flour sack. The biggest thing is you wanna make sure whatever the hole is, it's big enough you can dip your brush in. So here, we're good. So I'm using Sweet Pickens Milk Paint and Flour Sack, and I'm just going right over the top of the DIY paint. All right, so you can see that this milk paint goes on nice and thin, and we're probably still gonna have to do, oh, fall break is gonna kill me. We're still gonna have to do one more coat after this, but we're getting pretty good coverage. White is one of those things that sometimes it takes a coat or two. So the thing about milk paint is that it's non-toxic, completely natural, no VOC, all natural, and oh, I already said that. Oh, and it's great because it comes in powder form, so it doesn't take as much packaging and doesn't take as much to ship it because it comes, you can buy a lot of milk paint and fit it in a box. You do have to mix it up yourself. If this was super duper shiny, I would be adding extra bond to it so it wouldn't chip off. But this piece wasn't super shiny. I did sand the top down and I don't mind if it chips a little bit. In fact, I'm hoping that it does. But just keep in mind, if your piece is super shiny or you want a nice smooth finish with no chips, extra bond is a must with milk paint. Always keep it on hand. You can add a little bit, try it out, then try a little more if you're not sure how much to use. I'm gonna do two coats of Sweet Pickens and Flower Sack and then I will show you what it looks like before we get into the sanding and distressing. So I've got my mask on because this dust powder's like crazy. You can see that I'm already getting some pretty good chippy crackle going on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and give these a good sand with my 220 on my orbital sander and then I might do wet distress, we'll just see.
Okay, so I did my orbital sanding. Now I'm coming back in with my wet sanding. Oops, that's too much water. I'm coming into wet sanding and just smoothing it out, especially getting into those places where you just can't get with the sander. And if there's any like squiggles from the orbital, I like to take the wet sander and smooth wet sand it technique and smooth out the squiggles. But the reason why I like to do a mix of orbital and wet is because the orbital really takes it down fast and then the wet really just fine tunes what I want it to be. I'm using Sweet Pickens Beeswax. It's all natural polish and I'm gonna use a dark wax afterwards, but it says it's handmade in Australia. So to all my Australian friends, this is from you guys. It's um, eco-friendly, skin-friendly, and it's non-hazardous and suitable to use on raw timber and painted surfaces. Ideal for chalk and milk paint. Apply with a stiff bristle brush or lint-free cloth and then buff after 30 minutes. So it says you can do more than one coat, so I'll probably do one coat all over and do like two or three coats on top, so that way I'm gonna get it. The only thing though is that I'm probably gonna get chips in this, so if you don't want to contaminate your whole beeswax when you're doing a chippy finish, scoop some out and then just use that. So that's what I'm gonna do. And it says it's good for your skin. We'll see if it's good. Also a lip gloss. It's still pretty chippy, so I've got my DIY black wax in a cup because I don't want it all over the place. So I have my DIY in a cup, my DIY black wax, because the same thing with the beeswax. I don't want the chips to contaminate it in case I'm doing a piece that I don't want white chips in. So I'm just taking my black wax. I've already beeswaxed and buffed this, and I'm just going over the edges and in the details. Just kind of giving some definition here and texture. And you have to be really careful because the wax likes to build up in the crack. So when I'm all done, I take a Q-tip and I kind of go over it and get all the excess wax out. You just rub it in. It gives it that real aged patina. Once I get my wax, rubbed on the way I want. I like to go over it again and just kind of buff it and smooth it out. So I've got 220 and I'm just going over the piece. Ooh, it's making a lot of noise. And you can see it's kind of getting like a streaky look. It's reducing the black, adding some gray. I'm gonna do this to the whole piece and then we'll put hardware on and we will be done. I'm hoping this video really helps clarify all the different shades of white that we have to offer. We've got great paint brands and I really want you to try them out. We started out with a DIY paint. We could have also used fairy chalk weather for the same results. And then we put sweet pickings and flower sack over the top, got super chippy and aged. Then we went through and beeswaxed which smelled amazing. In fact, Zeb walked in and he's like, what's that smell? Like, it's the wax I'm using. Then we followed it by the dark wax and sanding for like an age architectural, I don't know, what's the word, Zeb? Salvage look? Oh, I don't know. There's like this amazing patina <laughs> on these that you just can't get unless you do layers and layers. I'm pretty sure I have chippy paint in every part of my body and black wax in every crack, but it was totally worth it to get this look. Be sure to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and don't forget to go to jamierayvintage.com to get your black wax and all your white paint, whether it's chalk, clay, or milk, one place you can buy it all.